I'll check it again. It can't be anything else. Just check the damn connector. I don't trust the diagnostics any more than I trust you. Because I don't like droids. They break. In the head. Well, whatever you call that thing on your head. Yeah, well, if I'm mean to you, it's because I care. The more worlds we travel to, the more questions I have. It's not just the hardships of the people, but something more. You are right, but there is something more at work here. Yes. These dead worlds, they... Well, they have a pattern to them. They were all touched by the Mandalorian Wars and the Jedi Civil War. But sometimes, well, I feel as if they're all connected in some other way. The attacks on Katar, Telos itself, the decay on Dantooine. Something is wrong with life. The connections have been damaged, sickened. Sometimes I feel like I almost understand and then it just slips away. So close. No, I do not. I do think there is some greater plan at work here. Perhaps. Dantooine is only one of the worlds. It was only the start of the journey. I would like to study the other locations. It is curious that the Jedi Masters chose those worlds to travel to. I wonder if the two are linked. I know not how. General? Sure do, General. I've made a few while I wasn't working on the ship. Here you go. Just to remember, the best shield is not getting shot at all. Something else I can help you with? Sure do, General. Something else. Her species does not see as we do. They perceive the galaxy through the Force, and it is how she found you. It is a rare gift squandered on her people. The Sith carry the battle to you, and you spare them. And as we travel, 
The empty places of this ship are filled. I hope your thoughts in this matter are clear. If you take her on as a servant, know that the Sith meet their end at the hands of their apprentices. It is not something I would wish to happen to you. This one you have saved has other masters. Though blind, she has ties to darkness. Her presence here is a threat to us, to you. Do not underestimate her or her loyalty. Perhaps I am not convinced. Did he? And what do you make of that? The Mandalorians were right to respect you on the field of battle. The Jedi are gone, vanished. Now, an entire planet of Force sensitives wiped clean of life. And now this slice of the galaxy is blind. It is no coincidence. The two events are tied. I fear you are right, and I fear it may prove more than that. War is a hunger, and there are spirits in the galaxy whose hunger is never satisfied. But there is little to be done about it now. Watch the seer carefully, she may reveal more. Ask, and I will answer. That crystal is bonded to you. Through you it acquires its character and strength. And through it, your power is enhanced. Let me focus on the crystal for a moment. There, now it is fully in tune with you again. Is there something else you wished? She did nothing to your eyes that was not already there. She has forced this upon you, but such crude methods are the markings of the Sith. Close your eyes. Feel this ship around you. The welding of the droid as it goes about its work. Now, stretch out. Hear the rumble of hyperspace, the hum of the hyperdrive. Ignore distractions and focus on my voice. The breathing of the blinded one as she meditates in the dark. of Qatar. I shall not fear, for in fear lies death and... You are strong indeed. What you heard were surface thoughts only, but it is something that masters have trained for for years and never learned. That is not the real question you should ask. Is such listening enough to perceive the world around you? It is not. Because to listen to the thoughts of another is much like attempting to see the universe only with your eyes. It is equally limiting. Now leave me be. I must rest.
life for yours. I am able to serve. If we enter battle, I will fight and die alongside you. I... I have not heard that question in some time. My flesh is healed if that's the answer you seek. I know. And I fear that others will see the mercy in your actions. And in my survival. And use it as a weapon to do you greater harm. you through the force. It was like a sound at the edge of hearing. And when I heard it, I found I could not ignore it. I serve my master. I am an emissary, a scout. My master was aware of a disturbance in the force, but was unaware of its nature, of you. The disturbance is not something one feels from a living thing. There is little my master does not know. And that you eluded his sight for so long is significant. But I do not know why. You cannot. His vessel roams the borders of known space. And even I do not know where he travels. Until he calls for me. Even if I could lead you to my master, I cannot permit you to find him. Until you are ready. If I bring you before my master, untested, without your potential realized, then you will be lost to me, and I cannot allow that to happen. It would be as if one brought fire to a paradise valley, shattered a cavern of rare crystal, or blinded a painter. I cannot. I will not. I would die first, and gladly, to preserve you, untouched. Unharmed. Now that I have found you, I cannot sacrifice what I have found. You will meet my master. It is inevitable. I have seen it. And when you stand before him and realize what you face, you must be prepared. Until then, I must protect you, help you, until you are ready. There's a, a greatness in you. A greatness that does not stem from the Force. It stems from who you are. And if my master does not understand you, cannot see you, then perhaps there is hope for us all. But if you seek to survive, then you must understand why this is so. There is much I see my master cannot. I fear it is because of my nature, the nature of my race. My people spend their lives seeing the galaxy, the energy streaming off stars, the growth of life, all things touched by the Force. It is not a subject which I have spoken of since its destruction. It was not a thing done with machines or weapons. The Force is far more terrible, and it touches more lives than any machine can hope to slay. For everyone that feels the Force, strongly, deeply, each one feels and perceives it in their own way. You have strengths, whether you know it or not, and my master has his. His power is great, and it comes from hunger. He is a wound in the Force, more presence than flesh. And in his wake, life dies, sacrificing itself to his hunger. And those who feel the Force strongly are beacons to his hunger. My people, my planet, would have been attacked in time. It was inevitable. Yet we could do nothing about it. The Jedi, the last council of the Jedi, came to our world to meet in secret. They hoped that perhaps among our people, they could achieve the clarity to see what was striking them from the darkness of the galaxy. They succeeded, 
but only in bringing him from the outer regions. And Qatar, with my kind, with the Jedi upon its surface, could no longer be ignored. And my people died, and the Jedi died, and there was no one left, only me. They hoped to see the threat that had been stalking them, and they did. But they were unprepared for the magnitude of the threat. He cannot deny his hunger for long. And any gathering of Jedi is something he cannot long resist. And now that the Jedi are vanishing, I do not know what will happen. Perhaps he will grow strong enough to eradicate all life, merely with his presence. I do not understand what you mean. They hope to see the threat. I will answer what I can, but my answers may prove useless to you. My people once had the power to perceive events, to see through the Force. That sight may manifest itself in many ways, and at times, I may affect the abilities of others to see as well. My sight has been damaged. What I have taught you, it is not the full extent of the perceptions of my people. My master, when he showed me my world, showed it to me as it is. It hurt. And since that moment, it has been difficult to perceive the Force as I once did. But after traveling with you, I feel that perhaps there was a gift in it, hidden beneath the pain. Only when one suffers do certain truths become evident, both of the galaxy and of the self. And I feel you are an example of this. If you wish to know, perhaps it is possible to show another what my people see, what I see. First, you must close your eyes. The surface of the ship, its sights, will only be a distraction. Now in your mind, reach out. Listen for my breathing. Do not focus on the sound, but the life behind it. Imagine its energy, its texture, in tandem with the breathing. And then in your mind, step back from the image and see what remains. There. It is not as difficult as I thought. You learn quickly. It will take effort to maintain such sight. But you now have that power. And with it, you can use it to see life around you in a different way, as I used to see it. Forgive me, but before you go, I must ask. Why do you do this? Why do you seek to help me? Teach me? You must not do this. I cannot allow you to weaken yourself for me. So you say. But it is not something I have observed or seen. I remember little of my homeworld before I entered my master's service. It is not as it was. There is little left of such memories. Or the planet itself. Very well. Perhaps we shall speak more of this at another time. But know this. I cannot allow you to weaken yourself for me.
do we intend to gather to us? This ship is not the galaxy. There is only so much room. Then prepare for an army, I think, for it seems many more will come in time. They will follow you because you are a leader. Their kind always needs such, even when the figure deserves no such obedience. Because I am not blind, that is why. I see what they see, hear their voices when they speak to you, and notice the change when they speak to others. I know many things, and I know what I am not. I am no leader. I speak with a voice that will never move others. I speak with a passion that goes unheard. They obey you because you are a leader, and perhaps something more. Have you noticed what has been happening? Have you felt it in them? The fool dances in your shadow for your favor. The disciple, he worships you quietly. The alien obeys you. Even within the machines, there are echoes. Watch them carefully. See their patterns and recognize the strength in it. Influence can be a weapon, one that you may need before your journey is done. I, I am but a mirror whose only purpose is to show you what your own eyes cannot yet see. good, and then act upon it. It is a powerful tool to motivate others. That was Revan's way, I believe. It was a strength. Have you never asked yourself how Revan took the Republic and Jedi beneath him, how he made them his? Ah, but to make officers turn on their own people, to bomb innocent worlds, to make pacts, strong influence indeed. And where did these Sith teachings come from? And why did Revan embrace them so strongly? So many questions, yet the answers are few. Oh, did they? No. Revan met no Sith Empire, yet he learned their teachings. Many have mistaken the soldiers beneath Revan, the machines that were constructed to be the Sith. They are wrong. The Sith is a belief. And what Revan formed was not an empire, but something else. Yet how he did it is curious. And I suspect the answer to that question is tied to another. How was Revan able to corrupt so many so quickly? Not a one. But we shall see where our journey takes us, I think. And see how many answers we come across, yes. Yes. Have you come with questions? Then ask, and I will do my best to answer. And... Did he? The man... I... He, if he can truly be called a man any longer, is one of the dark lords that pursues you. I do not think he knows what you are. Not yet. He spared the Miraluka, and that may have been the last shred of feeling that exists within him. Keep his slave close to you. I suspect there was a reason he spared her, and perhaps a reason that she survived when the rest of her people and the Jedi did not. Entertain what illusions you will. I am too tired to argue them with you. One cannot have power of that magnitude that her master possesses and still think and perceive the universe as we do, as most of us do. I had hoped that you would not have to confront him, but her presence here has changed all that. You will have to meet him in battle. You must be prepared to sacrifice the blinded one. Perhaps her death will buy you the time you need to deal with her master. Entertain what illusions you... 
It is a technique that is almost as old as the Sith themselves. It is a means of severing connections between life, the Force, and feeding upon the death it causes. It cannot be taught. It can only be gained through instinct, through experiencing its effects firsthand. Yes, and he fed upon its destruction. It will sustain him for a time. Power? Do you think so? You would be wrong. There is no strength in the hunger he possesses, and the will behind his power is a primal thing, and it devours him as he devours others. His mere presence kills all around him, slowly feeding him. He is already dead. It is simply a question of how many he kills before he falls. Nothing is impossible with the Force. It is an energy that flows through all living things, and like energy, it may be harnessed, channeled, and consumed at times. It may even be a substance that can burn and ignite. Do not think of his power as one would a weapon, or one of your warships of the Republic. It is terrible, but it is still a subtle thing. The sect of assassins that chase you feed on the Force. What he does is simply the pinnacle of what they could achieve in time. And that is why they and their techniques must be wiped out. No one again must experience and learn what her master did. As much as one may use the force to bolster the wills and strengths of others, the reverse is possible, though not often used. Instead of sending one's will through connections in the force, instead such connections are drawn upon, fed upon, and drained completely. Then you understand how terrible such a power is, and why it must be ended. It is an empty road to the dark side, and by traveling it, the price is death before one's time. He is a breach in the Force, capable of consuming the lives of those around him. Sometimes the touch is slow, as it is with his crew. It is not something he can direct or focus, much like hunger itself. He is more of a hole in the Force than a living thing. Force sensitives and worlds rich in the Force draw him. The Miraluka world was one such place. That is why where the Jedi gather, Jedi will die. He will feel it, unless they mask their presence. But Katar called out as a beacon to him, and he could not resist it. And he cares nothing for the Sith, or its teachings, or the Jedi. And when the Jedi are dead, he will feed on the galaxy, the Republic, and eventually consume the Sith as well. There is no future in the empty galaxy he sees, and that is why he must be stopped. The breach must be sealed before his power grows beyond what even we can hope to stop. Perhaps he is bound to her, as I am bound to you. If so, there may be a death served by hers. You must be prepared to sacrifice the blinded one. Perhaps her death will buy you the time you need to deal with her master. is something I have observed, and now I feel I must say it. I have found your presence to be inspiring. With your growth in the Force, you seem to have found your center, and throughout the dangers we face, you remain calm and focused. I understand now why others followed you to war. Perhaps that is what leadership is. And it is something I have seen in only a few during my travels. In any event, it has been some time since I traveled with a Jedi, nor one so firmly upon the path. I wanted to thank you. I fear the stories that were spoken of you have misrepresented you. And if I have the opportunity, I shall reverse them whenever they arise. Very well. Then I shall keep my favorable opinions to myself. That is hardly surprising. What do you wish to know? Well, 
I do not know if you are aware of how fragile the Republic is at the moment. Its influence is stretched thin, and it grows weaker with time. Still, there is hope, and I must remind myself of it, even when times grow dark. As long as we hold Onderon and Telos, then perhaps we have a chance. There are many factors. Aside from protecting Telos and Onderon, we need a rallying force. We need the Jedi, even if they are just figureheads. That is why I traveled to Dantooine, to find some trace of them. The Jedi are a symbol. As much damage as their reputation took during the Sith War and the Jedi Civil War, there are still many who they serve as an example. Plus, there have been times in the past where a single Jedi has been enough to change the face of a world, or a galaxy. I suppose I still believe that might be possible. Despite the betrayal of many of the Jedi against the Republic, I must concede that as figureheads, they do serve a vital role. Dantooine was one of the few Republic worlds on the Outer Rim. It is why the Republic is attempting to get the settlement up and running. But now that you have protected the settlement on Dantooine, it will serve to stabilize the Republic presence on the Rim. The Republic is fragile right now. Telos is important because its success will determine whether or not the other dead worlds receive the same reconstruction efforts. If Telos is rebuilt and made habitable again, it will affect a string of worlds along the rim. Onderon, strangely enough, was unaffected by the Jedi Civil War. It's almost as if Revan didn't want to attack it. Its resources and position on the rim make it a vital supply line and guard post against outer rim attacks. Also, it's the only world in the Republic still capable of seeding ecosystems into other dead worlds. Onderon's wildlife is some of the most aggressive in the known galaxy. Merely placing some of those beasts on target worlds will guarantee their habitation for years to come. The Jedi Civil War brought much suffering to the galaxy, and the forces that Malak and Revan amassed against us seemed limitless. Many worlds were destroyed, trade routes disrupted, and the Republic fleet was almost decimated. While it is said that Revan and several Republic heroes and Jedi defeated Malak, in many ways Malak had already won. The war was costly, and it shattered the Republic. In time, the Republic might recover, but if a threat strikes now, if certain key worlds are not held, then the Republic will collapse. Telos, Onderon, Dantooine. Without them, the Republic will either die slowly or quickly by fire. That is my thought. The Republic is not without its flaws, but it is preferable to anarchy. Without supply lines and a standing military, the chaos that would result would be greater than the Mandalorian Wars. That is hardly surprising. What do you wish to know? A force bond? What do you mean? I'm not sure I understand. No. I thought I had heard mention of such connections in some of the Holocrons, but I do not possess them. They are part of the Holocrons that were taken from the Enclave. I do not know. I do not know who has taken them. If we were to find them, perhaps I could help you find the answers you need. I know some of what you speak. It is said that when a Jedi and Padawan establish a close connection, that they can feel each other across distances and coordinate their movements in battle. The intensity of the connection varies, 
That bonding is said to also be something that manifests itself in such techniques as Bastila's battle meditation, the ability to touch the minds of others, to demoralize or inspire them. It is also said that moments of death or near death may also cause such bonds. The stronger one is in the force, the stronger the connection. Thoughts. Images, perhaps, but not actual communication and words. A bond often causes a sensation to be passed along it, such as extreme fear and pain. Still, I have seen Jedi who have the ability to communicate with aliens and beasts. It is a rare thing. Perhaps telepathy is one such talent. I've never heard of a bond being lethal. I suppose such a thing is possible. I had not truly believed Bastille as battle meditation until I had seen it in action. That is hardly surprising. What do you wish to know? You are correct. I am afraid I have not been entirely open with you concerning my past. If I look familiar, it is because we have met before, at the Enclave on Dantooine, many years ago. As on Coruscant, Force-sensitive children are taken to Dantooine as well. Though it is done rarely and only with those they believe are destined to become Jedi Knights. It is the secret nature of the place. If you are not chosen by a master when you have come of age, however, then the path of the Jedi is denied to you. I met you on Dantooine, long ago, briefly. You taught us the ways of the Force, how to hear it sing within others, within the life around Dantooine. It is difficult to explain the difference between you and Master Vruk, but I think it is because he was knowledgeable, but not a leader, not a mentor. You were different, we could all feel it, and I knew that if I were to have a master, I would want it to be you. And then you went to war. Many Jedi went to war, and the Jedi Masters proclaimed that you were Jedi no longer. Atris, the mistress of the Archives, was first among them. I knew at that moment that if you would no longer be a Jedi, then you must be correct. I realized I did not want to be a Jedi. Instead, I wished to follow your path. And in any event, there was no one to train me, even if I wished it. They all went to war as I grew past the age of acceptance. It is possible to forget the Force, you know. If you have not felt it strongly enough, then there is little to miss. But I never felt the Force as strongly as I did when I was with you. And so I decided to serve the Republic, study the Jedi teachings, gather them perhaps. It was important to me to understand the Jedi now that they were gone. I felt some part of you should be preserved, so that your lessons would not be lost. Perhaps. I still harbor doubts about the path I walked. I think you are right. It is time. I have watched you. You have become strong in the Force again. But that is not all. You have achieved a center in the chaos around us. And I have felt it, my master. The one intended for me. Left to fight in the Mandalorian Wars. Now she has returned. And I ask her now if she will train me in the ways of the Force. The one who was to be my master was lost at Malachor V. So it ends. I want you to teach me the ways of the Force. To become a Jedi Knight. What I meant to be.
Yes? Is something wrong? Forgive me, but there is something I must ask. In my study of the Jedi histories and the more... contemporary records, I have heard tales of a Jedi who was exiled. You are that Jedi. But the records are somewhat evasive on why this was done. I wanted to discuss why you chose to leave the Jedi Order and accept exile. Perspective. Nothing more. I see. And because you went to war, they cast you out? Do you have a record of this trial? Perhaps I shall examine it when I get the chance, with your permission. I appreciate your trust. Thank you. Do you need a hand? No, I don't. Go back to your training. I'll call you if I need someone useless. Is there some problem? I was only offering to help. Problem? No, no problem. Just wondering how long you're planning to stick around. For as long as she needs me, of course. How heroic of you. Well, she doesn't need you. In fact, we were doing just fine until you showed up. Actually, there are times when it seems you could use some help. Always with the details, aren't you? You can't fool me. You have some agenda. Spying on her, always keeping your eye on her. No, no, I don't. I, well, I simply admire her. She has many qualities worthy of respect, and the strength that matches her beauty. Surely you've noticed. Yeah, and I noticed first. Get it? So cut it out. And another thing, stop being all noble around her in your big hero way. She sees right through your little act. She likes honest guys, not guys who run around being unselfish and heroic all the time. I thought she was the hero. Is there? Must be hearing things, but for a moment. Have you come with questions? Ask, and I will answer. Yes? Very well. When I spoke of sight before, there is a similar handicap that tends to occur among those strong in the Force. They neglect their skills. Some believe they no longer need them. The greatest wielders of the Force are those that maintain some grounding to the more physical realities of the universe. 
Some wielders of the force have mastered piloting, others the ability to fix and repair and build, from simple moisture vaporators to more complex machines such as droids and vehicles. One's ability to understand the human body and its ailments, for example, can make your powers within the force more complete, more powerful, when you attempt to repair the cellular damage of another. And others have mastered the more subtle work of politics, persuasion. Do not doubt that a galaxy may be conquered with words, a republic overthrown, and an empire made. When such skills are honed, one's abilities with the force become that much stronger. My warning to you is this. Do not rely on your companions to compensate for your weaknesses in skill. There will be times they will not be there to help you when needed. What skill would you say is your greatest strength? And what skill would you say is your greatest weakness? this. Take your greatest weakness, devote effort to it, strengthen it, and I will show you how it shall strengthen your power in the Force. As you learn and train and test yourself against the galaxy, all your skills have a chance to improve and grow as well. When you devote some of that training to your weakest skill, you will know. Yes. Have you come with questions? Very well. Have you done as I asked? Very well. Then know this. Many are the times I meditate in the silence of my chambers. Do you know why I do this? I do this so that I might center myself, listen to the currents of the galaxy. There are others who center themselves by achieving a moving meditation where operating on the minds of machines achieves a similar calm in one's own mind. Skill does not always draw from the force, but it is a measure of power nonetheless. It can grant knowledge, help steady oneself when one's thoughts are in chaos, or grant enlightenment. Much can be achieved without the force, as you know. Life continues, persists, and may be helped or harmed as a result. Now I am tired. Leave me to my meditations. Yes. Have you come with questions? Very well. Very well. Sit with me. You have brushed the surface thoughts of another. It is a start. Calm yourself. This time, silence your own thoughts. Keep them still. Imagine the waters of the room of a thousand fountains, each stream suddenly falling silent and still. Imagine the ice of Telos, cold and smooth as it gathers upon the plateau. Now, stretch out. Feel the ship around you. Strip away the metal and see the souls and minds of those that fill its corridors with more thoughts and dreams and worries than can fill the space of this ship. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, I shall not fear, for in fear lies death and... How could the Jedi leave the Republic? Was it because of the Civil War? Is it possible that they... Switch the face of the plus one, minus one card. The totals are nine, ten. Switch the face of the plus two, minus two card. The total is eight, eleven. Switch. Your command echoes still, General, and I obey, as I did at Malachor. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar. Switch the face of the plus one, I minus shall one not card. Fear. The totals are nine, ten. Fear. Switch the face of the plus two, minus two card. Your command echoes still, General, the total is eight, and I obey, Switch. as I did at Malachor.
not now. Focus on my voice. Malakor. Now do you hear me? Truly hear me. You have taken the first steps on a much longer road, Exile. The droid cannot be read in such a way. As for the alien who served with you in the war, its thoughts are more difficult, requiring many translations in meaning. Often it is better to read their impulses and images than their spoken thoughts. That is why he is deaf to you. I have found his impulses are cold, like a dead weight. His thoughts are black. Indeed. It is strange that I did not. Perhaps. I would not put much weight on such things. Of course there was. It is because Atten was not playing Berserk, yet he counts cards in his head. At times, he will list off engine sequences, memorize the hyperspace routes on the other side of the galaxy, count the ticking in the power couplings, even though they are fixed. At other times, he will imagine certain base lusts, certain indignities. It may be Atten is far cleverer than he feigns to be, or perhaps he is simply a fool. Something up? Passes the time. It's better than listing off engine sequencers, memorizing hyperspace routes, or counting ticks in the power couplings. Why do I play Pazak? Alright, I'll show you. Good match. Now... What are you thinking about right now? Right. And that's why I play Pazak in my head. Because if you don't, you've left the door open. And anyone could walk right in. Of course you did. You see, Jedi, light or dark, do it. More often than you'd think. But I never heard one say they were sorry before. That's a new house rule. Ah, I play Pazak in my head. But while I'm doing that, it's a lot harder for someone to walk in. No. I can only teach you to play Pazak. Do you understand what I'm saying? Good. Now you understand. Alright, I'll deal then. If you're ever fighting someone who has the power over your mind, whether light or dark, play Pazak. Start listing hyperspace routes, recite engine sequencers, and when they try to use their powers on you, suddenly it's not as easy as they thought. Because you'll be right here with me, playing Pazak, where they can't reach you. <laughs> 